Okie dokie. Also took it as a nice opportunity, perfect time to beat Doggo so that partner can keep working away at her stuff. But with that, we should be pretty much ready to, to hop into it here. I guess we could change the name on the stream. Something I, I always forget about. But let's uh let's squeak in a little bit of Meteor and always have to think about it as I spell it. Nicole, get your vote for Cinder Acolyte. Shocker. But sounds good. We weren't able to uh, to appease that during the, the frog run. So let's let's try it out for the first one here and see how it goes at the very least. Feel it, Reaver. <laughs> I think it'll be it'll be a little bit before I get back into the cats. I think I I earned a well-deserved break there with the final victory on Cat Von Du. But someday we'll be back, don't you worry. Maybe we'll even Go for another 15 rune cat. Maybe that's my secret. I can only play 15 rune runs on Felids. Everyone else, I die constantly. But I did one and done that back in the day. Maybe could do it again. But okay, let's get ready to pop in with Meteorin. We will go with Cinder Acolyte. For your sake, Colgate. Weren't able to do that on Baraki, so that sounds good to me. I'm trying to remember all the little... Uh, tips and trick for Meteorans. So obviously Zot Clock goes something like 10 times faster on them, so definitely have to keep that in mind. Um, we have really good health and magic pools, really solid aptitudes across the board as well to make up for the speedy uh, turn-based shenanigans that we're going to have to get into here. And on top of that, we also have a permanent Krona effect, so we're harder to hit. Or, that's not at all true. We are easier to hit, of course, and have almost no chance of stealth, courtesy of being a star, be a star blessed being, I guess, at the end of the day here. And there's almost definitely more than I'm forgetting about. Let's hop in and take a look at our stat screens so that I can at least jog my memory. And names, what do we want to be? We can be, uh, I'm gonna be Star Child to start off here. Stardust is also like Ziggy. There's so many good ones here, but let's start off on less little Star Child, shall we? And we'll take a peek. So, right, we've regained magic and MP as we explore, so that makes it a little bit easier for us to uh, expedite the whole between fight experience here. And we're already at 600 turns as we start off. It's going to be a wild ride. Regen by Explorer, also not sure I mentioned. I did not until we came in here, but thanks Ramalama for mentioning as well. And yeah, I guess there might be something else here. We have Sense Surroundings, which we mentioned. Otherworldly? Forget what you do here. But of course, with Ignis here, we start off with as high PD as we're ever gonna get. Nice Flame Falchion. We start out with just Scorch, right? So we don't have any starting spells? Correct. So let's see how that goes. We of course always have Foxfire Swarm, which I believe summons something like 12 Foxfires. Pretty solid. Fiery Armor. I don't remember. Plus 7 AC? Okay. I'll take that. Also, before we get running, we of course have to engage in our usual start of run routine. I'd like to train some fire magic, please and thank you. Long blades will hold off for, for now. I think we will end up potentially aiming for some extra decks, which is why I went with the blade start. Don't know, don't hold me to that. Might change our mind as we continue onwards here, but that seems all right. Of course, get auto pickup going as well, though won't be relying on this too, too much, seeing as how most of the time we're probably just going to be auto moving or manual moving rather, quite the opposite. And last but not least, right, we will drop the seed. Oh my gosh, I wasn't even expecting we'd get into another run quite so early, so I don't have the folder structure open off the top of the dome here, but if you'll give me just a quick moment, we will of course grab that seed out just in case any of you lovely folks want to join along at home, see how you fare in the same dungeon setup here. Oops, not saves, I want to go to morgue. It's always nice when your characters, even on starting out, begin in the morgue file. It gives you that nice boost of confidence moving forward. Get ready to be blinded. At least I've 
learned about that. I have no clue how to consistently change where the notepad window pops up. For whatever reason, it's the one thing that continues to, uh, to evade me. But there we go. <laughs> Stretch from Colgate 2. Let's do it. A bit too much slouching with Che there. Let's get some, some posture checks going on. Fortunately, my legs got a bit of a stretch heading for the drink, so got that out of the way nice and early. But let's hop back to it, shall we? Oh, dang it. Now that we're done Baraki, I can no longer say hop back to it with quite the same uh, gravitas, you know? It's a real shame, real bummer. But okay, let's see what we first come across. Ideally, it's someone we can just fight, which a kobold is. Beautiful. And we won't really be hanging out to heal at any point. I think I will be relying on the auto explore or on the exploration regen to uh, put us in a decent spot in that regard. And if we can just hit level two, we can bring Scorch into the mix, which is a decent little uh, starting capstone for us here. Or at least doing some damage to our foes from range. There we go. Scorch, please and thank you. If I could find some more fire spells, I would be overjoyed. Oh, I did walk past a downstairs. Oof, probably should have taken that down. Even if you don't want to go down a floor, I find that it's best on these kinds of speed runs to uh, go up and down any stairs you come across so you have them as a backup. Statue form is kind of nice. Could potentially be using that in the future here. Though with the, the decent stats leveling up, we, I'm not sure which uh, direction we'll end up going. Maybe we'll be a bit more of a hybrid character. You never know with Cinder Acolyte how things are going to uh, land at the end of the day. You know, let's just take you Kidlywinks upstairs. Ooh, don't wait to heal. That's going to be a hard habit to break. <laughs> at least we got a decent number of extra turns added into the mix here. Meteor, more like meter and always running. <laughs> meter, I hardly knew her. And I can use XP to check books without having to walk on them. Good for deciding whether it's worth the detour. That's a great point. I think we will head upwards to find our final stair. Probably should just be heading for the stairwell we already know exists. I'm going to regret this down the road. This is why Meteorin might be one of the characters that definitely benefits from having a few tester runs today before we get into the meat and potatoes of it next week because I am well and truly prepared to uh, get to Lair, realize I don't have nearly enough turns left, and hang my head in shame. But, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Could always be surprised in a positive way, wouldn't mind. Okay, that was not worth the detour whatsoever. Let's uh, head up this way. Meteor. <laughs> you know what? I think I liked Meteor. <laughs> no, is running. Oh, a Staff of Fire. We could actually end up using. That is pretty fantastic. Again, I'm on the lookout for more fire spells, if you could uh, be so kind, game. Otherwise, we have our lovely Scorch available to us. Can start off each of these encounters with it and keep exploring like we do. I'm hoping the stairwell's this way. Oh gosh, if it's not, we might be in trouble. Staff of Earth, nice to meet you, nice to see ya. Oh gosh, oh gosh, I'm losing hope. I don't think this is, I don't think this is the way. Could also end up with a very serious arson charge. Hey, what happens in the dungeon stays in the dungeon, okay? No snitches in chat here. Don't have to tell my family about all the horrible things that I did for the sake of survival while deep in the depths, all right? Hopefully we can all be on the same page with that. So I'm almost down, back down to 600. <laughs> and I... Am I losing my mind? <laughs> okay, well, I guess I'm heading back to this stairwell. No need to travel down the floors if you just burn your way to Zot. <laughs> That's the spirit. 
Is Scorched Flame hot enough to melt steel beams? I guess we'll find out. We'll burn our way through the floor if that's what it takes. But okay, let's hope that we find our downstairs right away. Fantastic. Welp. I guess we could rise in flame. Um, <laughs> fiery armor, probably a, a too little too late, but it is what it is. For honor and glory. And for the the world ahead, oh my gosh. Get wrecked. Okay, easy actually. So straightforward, even a child could do it. It's vampire armor, it's really low cost and lasts a long time. It is super powerful. Like absolutely incredible stuff, for sure. 7 AC plus a thorns effect is wonderful exactly what we need really at the end of the day floor three is a pretty safe skip we want to be careful of floors where the temple could show up of course but as is i probably will mostly just skip past that son of a gun let fiery clothing uh, do the rest of our work who do we wish to worship today i kind of want access to spells so in that regard it's tempting to go with uh like a Sif or a Behemoth approach. Sif gives us a much more well-rounded appeal. But of course, uh, Behemoth, in terms of destruction, doesn't get much better than that. Even killing the Ogre is fantastic. I know another really good one to have on Meteorin, uh, deity-wise, is Okawaru. Oh, what about Ignis? You're right. What am I... Ignore me. I'm losing my mind live on camera. I do, in fact, already have a deity. I'm so sorry, Ignis. Please forgive me, for I have sinned. Um, you know what? I want box fires. Please and thank you. That one's more expensive, and definitely should try to uh, avoid it, if at all possible. GP is great with Meteorin. Yeah, we'll have to see. Ignis only dies if you leave him, which is why I have, uh... In most of my time, what few runs I've had with Ignis, I've ran with the idea that you've got to stick with them until the, the end of the line. Because if you get out of here with the Orbazot, then maybe, just maybe, that gives us the power necessary to bring Ignis back from the brink, you know? So that's the, the dream at the very least. Okay, I do want that book. Blink and Manifold Assault are both big ones for me. Or have sinned according to you anyway, isn't that always the case? And do I want to be the cause of a god's death? Because I am every time I clear a slime pit. <laughs> I like to not think too much about uh, the evil we're putting into the world whenever we kill the, rep the physical embodiment of a god themselves. Because you're not wrong. It is terrible. And yet, I do it all the time. Okay, so we don't get any of the magic gods. And why am I doing this to me again? Gosh darn it, Ignis. I'm not used to starting with faith. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, O oh, heavenly candle, for I have sinned. Well, um, we'll see how many more times that happens as we continue forward here. I guess it's nice because it means we don't have to look for Economical Temple. I can do another floor skip here. Hmm. Fortunately, there's a peaceful solution. <laughs> Just worship Jivia forehead. Cult of Slam after Tales. <laughs> Mummy gets innate faith. Oh, really? Like, is this a, a trunk thing that we're talking about? Or am I just missing out on a, a clever pun here? Oh, cool. So is it like um, a monk start style thing? Where you immediately get upgraded a bit in terms of your overall piety? Or do you start with a, a deity? Because if so, that's interesting. No, it's like an amulet of faith. Oh, holy moly. That's pretty wild. Huh. So, what you're saying, mummy actually OP now? That's pretty wild stuff. 
Yeah, you get a free amulet of faith, even keeping your slot open for others. That is wild. That's very cool. Well, we'll see where we end up getting in the series before Trunk rolls around here. I'm hoping that it doesn't come down to that. It does not stack with the actual amulet of faith. Oh, I'd hope not. Otherwise, that's just like infinite abilities, infinite slouches. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Um, but okie dokes. What do I do with this Kibli Wing, okay? Could switch over to my Staff of Fire at least. Maybe Scorch gets ya. 27 health, 2d9, and deals more damage the second time. Kind of always forget what the range on this son of a gun is. Okay, one more. There we go. Should be able to kill you though. Fantastic. No issues whatsoever. I will gladly pick up a nice little bit of uh, extra consumable power there in the form of the wand. Beautiful. And still killing everything. Rapid succession. One cool thing about the exploration-based regen is that does allow us to potentially survive lethal poisoning. So that's kind of neat. Always cool. Well, Mummy was made to be hunger immune and now that's gone, so they need a buff. Fair enough. I mean, to me, I've always viewed mummies as more of a fun challenge species, even with the hunger immunity. And especially without it, it kind of fully cemented them into that role in my books, but still happy to see it. I mean, anything that gets people playing certain species in certain combos more often is generally a, uh, a good thing in my book. Some good fun at the very least. And with the necromancy rework and mummy getting necromancy enchanters earlier maybe mummy of kiku is finally desirable <laughs> maybe maybe let's see we're at full casting even in scale mill so we can start upgrading our defensive capabilities here just a smidge at d8 is where we can start finding the lair so now we have to slow down and maybe do a bit more exploration just to make sure that we're not leaving that unfound in the background Ooh, I don't love the eels, though, for being honest. Oh, and brain, stop doing that. Do not rest up. Whatever you do, this is not an option. Peace was never an option. Just keep riding forward till the end of time itself. Maybe by the end of this series, we'll get the hang of it, and then we'll go back to regular characters, and I'll lose my mind all over again. Rinse and repeat. And thus, the wheel of time spins on. Okie dokie. There we go. Not too shabby against those kiddos. And the Kiku rework, of course. Yeah, definitely that as well. Necromancy mid-game still feels like a buff to other damage types, though. Necromancy is nice early. And infestation, haunt, death store, etc. is late. Yeah, I'm still not completely sold on... Um come to me my friend on new necromancy i mean granted my only experience with it so far was on felid which to be fair had other issues at play so you know with that being said with that being granted oh hello my friends let's take you all back on a bit of a, uh, a road trip here fantastic and we'll just continue onwards and upwards beautiful but yeah, so maybe we'll have to give Necromancy another spin at some point with a different species that has a bit more built-in survivability to it, so I can actually, you know, experience everything the great wide world of death magic has to offer, but who's to say? We'll have to see how it goes. You think they fixed auto-explore from Meteorin to not fully heal on auto-explore? Did I do something weird with my RC file? So I'm not hitting auto-explore, I'm hitting the wait key. I'm hitting 5 to wait 100 turns. So it's even worse. I'm doing my best not to hit auto explore at all, and so far I've managed to resist the temptation of the Oki. This you seductive darling Oki you. But uh unfortunately it's super deeply ingrained for me to just wait after a fight manually. Cause back in the day, auto explore, I believe, didn't do that on its own, and so it was something you had to tell it to do. So I still have muscle memory from all all the way back yonder, back in the Stone Age, really, of DCSS. 
I guess we could potentially now with this level of exploration go down. You never really want to uh, have to backtrack at all underneath the meteor, and at least that was my understanding of it. So I've been trying my best to uh, only leave floors under the assumption of I never wish to see your face again. But we'll see how it goes. Um, as for our skills, hmm. So we haven't gained more fire magic. We do have some other ones, though. Necromancy has a big dex start. What do you mean by that? Like it synergizes well with dex, or are you, th or is it one of the the backgrounds? I'm missing something. Probably missing something regardless, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Hmm. You're on Demon Spawn Necromancer, but you found a bland triple crossbone three floors later. Your sling, right? Yeah, you mentioned earlier too. Now you're utilizing Anguish, so ranged dude that animates things as support. Yeah, okay. If you're just saying that it synergizes, I can get you there. For sure. I mean, any kind of summoning based build, summoner or necromancy, definitely combos well with it. Old caster start, 7 int, 5 decks. Yeah, I was wondering if I never really touched, like, what's the the flavor for like reavers what's their special thing because like fighters pretty straightforward sword and board gladiators a bit more on the deck side lighter armor start with nets you know hunters and stuff has the throwing not all conjurer has more inch good to know and yeah i guess as far as this character and where we wish to head in the future i could just learn staves to start out and see how that goes Cinder Dragon Flight to start with six in six strength. Yeah, it felt a little high in the strength department for sure. I was expecting more decks. <laughs> Cause I'm not used to the CA start, but good to know. I guess they are built to be potentially more acceptable hybrid characters. Since you only started with Scorch, you might have nothing else in your pocket. So you will have to transition into more of a traditional sword and board. Cinder Acolyte is the only background that starts with zero decks. Well, how about that? Probably shouldn't have chosen uh, the, the long blade start then. <laughs> Whoopsie daisies. I mean, regardless, we got staves pretty quickly here, and I think I will potentially go the staff route for funsies. See where that takes us. Maybe I can manifest the elemental staff into being. It has been too long, and I would absolutely adore finding that. Might also learn some armor skill here, and we'll just do that for now and see what happens, you know? Play it by ear, and see how it all shakes out. Um, you know what? I will not fight a boulder beetle right now, please and thank you. I don't mind whatsoever. We could check out what this flail is looking like at the end of the day. I do love Scorch. Absolutely incredible spell. Oh. Oh, right, there's a Sky Beast. That's what's invisible. Broke my brain there for a moment, but it kind of recovered. It, we got there. 50% chance, please? Nope. Um, so I guess Rising Flame? <laughs> oh, it, it's after a short delay. Oh, I have waited too long. Whoopsie daisies. Uh, let's see if Fiery Armor has any shot of keeping us alive here at the uh, the final moments. And what else? We could, I guess, try to paralyze you again. You're the problem with the plus two battle axe. Okay, plus five dire flail. Not great either. If we're being honest. Yeah, 26 damage. Did I think Flat Rising Flame was instant? I did. But I've also never used it before, so makes sense that I I wouldn't exactly have the greatest idea of how it all goes down. So Potion of Curing actually kind of worked out for us there. Do I just keep chugging Curing? <laughs> I want to stay alive long enough that we can at least experiment a bit more here. Learn, you know, what the Meteor is all about. How it feels, how it moves. So we'll, uh, we'll do our best to not die immediately here. Though it's a close call regardless of how we slice and dice it get a bit more healing from there real quick 
and let's just keep it moving but not that way please and thank you uh, we could head right back up to this stairwell but we're probably pretty close to finding another no especially if we you know get some steamed eel going some lovely unagi on this fine evening feel a bit more experienced fantastic Okay, nope, that's not where the stairs is. Maybe down here? Why did it not go off? Yeah, it did not end up activating in the end. I don't, didn't think we had the time, nor the space. So I decided to, uh, to just use Fiery Armor instead. Truly incredible spell. I should be relying on it a bit more, but I'm also hesitant. I'm not a good person for Ignis because I feel like... I very much am a, a victim of too good to use syndrome, to the the nth degree, to a fault. <laughs> New key bullet point in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hello again, my friend. At least we're in a better spot to deal with you this time, and we'll just keep it going. I think we almost definitely explored enough of the previous floor to. Uh, find lair if it was going to make an appearance there so with that in mind we will just start blitzing our way through stop resting me come on brain we can do this we can get it to the point where i kind of seem like i know what i'm doing <laughs> definitely we can back up once more here i probably should have flame armored again to be fair in fact, you want never too late, never say die. Let's do her and fantastic. Guess I still have to not die to you, right, my my wolf friend. So with that in mind, come on, one of these fifty percent flips, <laughs> one of these coin flips has to go through. There we go, fantastic. And we'll try our best to keep exploring at low health. I know that's a a big feature of playing as Meteorin is you want to take advantage of that as much as possible, the uh, exploration-based regen, of course. So we'll see how it goes. It can be difficult to remember that buttons exist with Ignis, <laughs> and all the Acolyte starts play play weird. Right, we're playing Acolyte start, and we're playing Meteorin, both of which I have almost no experience with, and very much go against my usual playstyle, so... We're definitely in for a bit of a, a wild ride, a bit of a treat here. We'll see how she goes. I mean, at the very least, we can murder that yak pack in our sleep, so that's nice. Okay, maybe that was a little overconfident. Not quite in our sleep, just confidently, competently, and with an air of, uh, of cool, smooth terror and absolute horror at the implications of my own actions you know just to keep it it fresh and flavorful and mix it all up here but plus one pair of gloves a little bit of extra ac never hurt nobody i will definitely throw those bad boys on we have our stairwell down if we start to lose hope in the uh the presence of a lair entrance which kind of am for sure not 100% confident. This could be our orc entrance, though, which is still good to know. And more importantly, good to take note of as well. Um, I think I can kill you, kiddos. So I'm going to keep fighting here against my better judgment. And we can just walk away from you, my friend. Hmm. Don't want to waste too many turns walking away. And we can start scorching at some point here. Oh, there is another one, another orc warrior behind you. Well, that's just lovely. Do I run? Hmm. But you were using Ignis like a reaver start. Now reaver start is a thing. Ignis is cool because it's the whole bird needs to fly out of the nest. <laughs> Ignis, in terms of flavor, is wonderful. I'm a huge fan. Very much enjoy that aspect of it. In terms of actual uh, execution... Uh, you know, jury's still out. I'm still learning. I'm not great, though, to be fair. I feel like we almost, we should almost give Cinder Accolade another start. 
But uh, it's also, you know, again, between that and Meteorin, I feel like I'm mixing too many chemicals in the air and I need to just have some goal, some idea of the plan moving forward. So I definitely have to think about that one a wee bit. But yeah, you get a good start and at some point you need to figure yourself out. It's fair enough. Play all random, null brain. I was thinking about Wanderer start for Meteorin, just to uh, alleviate my need to actually make any decisions. So I will try it out. Uh, Colgate, don't worry, we will probably be back to Cinderac Blade at some point here, but let's uh, 